okay, YouTubers, alien detectives and space sleuths and Paradolia police alike, uh, we have another look today at the Opportunity Rover, which basically has gone dead on us and we haven't heard from it for about two months now. And unfortunately, the big dust storm we had on Mars a while back has knocked it out. And uh, I'm not saying it's dead, but it may not recover depending on what happens next. Now, um, the, you may want to check out some of these links. I've got a link to the various articles and things here that you can check out. But this, this was interesting. Uh, basically, this is the NASA page and it, and it tells you what's happened. And uh, they, they've basically lost contact with it since June the 10th. And uh, the dust storm has knocked out the rover basically because it cannot get enough power into its solar panels. Now, they performed several studies on uh, on the state of its batteries before the storm and temperatures of, at its location. Because the batteries were in relatively good health before the storm, there's not likely to be too too much degradation. So they're hoping they're hoping that the 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 uh, opportunity will wake up again. Because what basically what it does when it when the power gets low, it will it will go into sleep mode until it's got enough power to, to start off again. And basically it's conserving its battery power. Uh, but what may have happened, that, that it was such a large dust storm, storm on, on Mars, that what may have happened, it may have deposited loads and loads of dust all over the solar panels, which means that the, the, the rover can't get enough power to actually perform any duties or move around or anything. So it may stay in, in sort of sleep mode for quite some time unless a, a, a friendly gust of wind comes along and blows all the, all the sand and crap off it like it did a couple of years ago when it miraculously recovered. Um, so th let's hope that does happen because uh, it's happened before um, and unlike the Curiosity rover this one does really rely on the sun the sun's power to, to power it and recharge it unlike the, the, the Curiosity which has uh, kind of radioactive isotopes that it, it uh, it gets heat from it. It converts the heat from the from the uh, the nuclear energy or radioactive energy, and then converts that into electrical power. Uh, so basically, it's got like a, a nuclear powered engine, uh, effectively. Uh, but this thing's a little bit more primitive, and it's been up there for nearly fifteen years. And it, it was only really uh, designed to uh, to well, it wasn't designed, it, they were hoping it would go on for years, but they weren't expecting it to last more than a year or two, I think. Um, and like the, the, the Spirit Rover, which, which got stuck in some mud or something uh, <laughs> uh, years ago, um, they, they weren't really expecting it to go for more than about a year or two, but it has, and it, it's been lucky. And uh, some people have, have sort of theorised that someone's gone up to it and cleaned it, but it, it hasn't. Uh, and no one's gone up and cleaned the, the Curiosity rover either. It's, it's got quite a lot of dust on it. But not being solar powered, of course, it can carry on regardless. Um, so if you want to check out, if you want to check out any of the Opportunity stuff, if you if you've got my app, my free app, which you can get on any of my videos, if you if you scroll down into the links in the description, there'll be a link to this app. If you go to go down to here, it's got the Opportunity Raw Images page here which takes you to this page. But it does say here, one new image since uh, the 10th of the 6th, 2018. So that may be an image that was sent before the dust storm. And in fact, if you look at it, it's only a partial image. It's this one here. It's the only new image. Uh, let's have a look there. And what we got is a load of white noise and a lot of image missing deep data here. That's basically probably where it was sending the, the, the image information via radio waves and th there was interference which, which meant that we lost some of the image. So that was the last thing it sent, which isn't great. It doesn't look promising, but uh, the, the rover team, the, the, the OPI rover team do seem fairly confident that it will come back to life. It has done before. I really hope it does because it's been up there a long time and a lot of, uh, a lot of us uh, researchers have been following it for many years now. And uh, it hasn't had as much press recently as the uh, as the Curiosity rover has, and they'll also be sending more rovers up there in, in a couple of years. We'll have the 20, 2020 rover, uh, which will have a very a much longer drill bit, 
a two meter drill bit and it will have DNA testing gear and all sorts of interesting radar equipment to scan below the ground as well which would be really cool so I'm looking forward to that it will also have a 20 meg camera on it digital camera uh, and that means we'll be getting some good high quality images for the first time hopefully and hopefully they won't downgrade them and make them look terrible like they do with a lot of these images okay so I'm just gonna for those of you who are new to the channel I'm just gonna show you some of the things that me and a few other researchers have found in the Opportunity Rover images here's uh, number one this is something I found a few years ago uh, and alien head found on Mars I will link to all these by the way at the end of this video these all, all these videos I'm about to show you parts of are in this uh, compilation uh, playlist Mars Opportunity and Spirit Rover Anomalies now I haven't put all my Opportunity Rover uh, videos in here just a few okay but you can check these out there will be a link at the end of this video so you can click on that and check them out yourself and if you want any of the images from these individual videos you need to click on the individual video and there will be an image link down below in the description as always okay so let's crack on with it I'm just going to show you a very short clip of each of these this is one of my favorite finds uh, from the opportunity and uh, it was one I found two or three years ago now about two two and a half years ago and uh, it's from a reasonably good quality image in color M many of the in fact most of the images we get from the opportunity are black and white this is one of the few color ones and uh, it looks like an alien mummified head here's the color enhancement coming up which is more recent I did a remake of this video and put the new images in which is what this is okay there we are there we have it and you can clearly see a mouth with teeth uh, a small receding chin here, eyes with a, some eye detail, hair, an ear with an earring, a rather pronounced uh, cheekbone here, and it seems to be sticking out of the ground. Now, lots of people have asked why the why these things are all just lying on the ground. Well, these are, most of these objects, as I have said before, most of these things, especially the skulls and and, and statues, appear usually in areas like this where you have a ridge and then you have erosion wind erosion where the sand is eroded away and you have often multiple skulls and fossils lying in an area which was probably once buried not too long ago okay so these were buried in mounds now whether they were buried there deliberately or whether they were just washed up there in some kind of tsunami or something like that who knows in some kind of disaster um, speculation is speculation there you, I couldn't prove it either way but basically they often appear in areas like this where we have a ridge and then usually near the bottom of a ridge line and we've had lateral wind erosion which has taken the, the soil and, and sand away exposing the, the fossils and other things underneath and there are over a hundred examples of these now most of them in Gale Crater taken by the Curiosity Rover but on my channel you will find over a hundred examples of skulls like this and statues and similar things that have been exposed by wind erosion and this one you can even see it in the raw clip even though the image quality isn't great you can even see it quite clearly you can see the teeth and, and the, the eyes and the brown ridges quite clearly and it becomes even more obvious when I, when I coloured it and highlighted it there okay so that was interesting that one Mars image device skeptics that's a fairly recent one I think that was about a year ago uh, not a year ago um, less than that a few months back so that's fairly recent that find that that's my most most recent uh, opportunity find there was this one which I think was found by another researcher uh, this was found by Vladimir Vladimirov what seems to be a car it sounds crazy but it does look like a car it's shaped like a car it has what look like wheels and a number plate with other details I'll just play a tiny bit of this and show you the enhancements abandoned car found on Mars not Elon Musk's Tesla uh, although he will probably go bust at some point soon I'd have thought <laughs> yeah well there we have it you've got a wheel sticking out here or tire with what looks like off-road tread on it can see those lines there 
You've got wheel arch here, wheel arch here. You've got the roof of the car. Some possible glass detail here or something. And you've got this rectangular part here, which corresponds very well to a number plate or, or at least something similar. There, if you watch the videos, you will see a lot more close-ups here. I don't go real close at the end of the video here, but if you go earlier on, there are some real up-close shots, and the, it does go into some good detail. But of course, the, the, the image quality isn't great because the, the, the camera on the Opportunity, like with the Spirit Rovers, was built and designed many, many years ago when digital cameras were relatively new. And uh, there's also some interesting structures here, like a little dome-shaped thing here, and uh, a, a, a rather strange object here. Don't know what these things are, but they don't look like rocks at all. This looks like debris. So that was interesting. There's another Vladimir find here, which is one of my favourites of all time, uh, the Mars battle tank. And uh, he found this, I think, about a year ago, uh, over a year ago, and uh, posted it on my page, and I asked him if I could do a video and he was quite pleased for me to do one and uh, this is up on the ridge line this is small this is only probably about six foot from front to back probably less actually five or four even and you can see a gun and a turret with a hatch on the top and you can even see wheels when it when, when it brightens up you'll see the wheel detail uh, yeah, you can just about make it out. So check that out. I mean, there is more detail in the video. It goes into real close-ups and it shows you the wheels and uh, other details on here. I mean, of course, this is a bit of a distance away and uh, there's not a great deal of detail, but it does correspond with a knocked-out tank, very much like this one from World War II, which is a Russian T-34. Very interesting. And I also show a lot of comparisons with uh, some of the tanks that I got uh, on on the game that I used to play called World of Tanks, I've got about 100 tanks on there, and some of them are very similar looking to this, and quite small as well. This is much smaller than this. Uh, <laughs> it's about a third of the size or less. Okay, so it's quite small. Like many of the things we found on Mars, they're kind of dwarf size, miniature size, but they still look relatively similar to Earth objects, but the scale is completely different. And some of these skulls, uh, like this one, is very large indeed. In fact, this is over a foot high, I would say, from here to here. So, like some of the ones I found in Gale Crater, uh, this is very large, although most of the skulls I found, and mummies and heads, and statues, are less than half size of the ones we would have on Earth. They're not human size. They're a third, or even a quarter size, some of them. Okay, so that gives you an idea of scale. So. This is not a full-size car. This is also very small. This is only about four or five feet across. From, well, across this way, probably about four feet or less. So this is also about one-third scale. So if it is a car, and it does look like one, it's very small. It's not on Earth. Uh, people keep saying these things are on Devon Island or somewhere in the Arctic or whatever. Well, no, they're not, because it's not only is it uh, on another planet um, but the scale is completely wrong uh, these things are way smaller than they should be for Earth so uh, a lot of people keep saying of Devon Island because of some out of date video by Rich Hall I think it was from years back saying that the, the rovers were were never sent to Mars and you know, uh, they, they probably on some island somewhere and NASA are faking it all. I don't think that at all. There's way too many images and way too many alien looking things which don't look like Earth skulls. Um, this is not an Earth skull. This is not a human skull. This is a skull of, of, of some kind of proto human or humanoid, as is this. This isn't a human. It may be partly human, but it's, the features are not what we would call standard human features. It, it's really quite different. Um, almost kind of Neanderthal looking in, in some ways, these skulls are, are quite different to modern humans. So they may be very, very old indeed and could have been buried for many thousands or even millions of years until recently. So a lot of people do take the mic and I get a lot of people saying, oh, it's just pareidolia. Well, no, pareidolia does not explain the sheer vast quantity of these finds. I'm only showing you a small microcosm of, of some of the finds here that have been found by myself and others. There are hundreds of similar things on my channel. In fact, 
there's over a hundred skulls and statues uh, that I found in Gale Crater alone, let alone anywhere else on Mars. And uh, lots of other people have found them as well. Um, so do check them out. I will put some links at the end of this video so you can link to the playlist that I showed you. Uh, the uh, Opportunity of Spirit playlist, which is this one here. I may even add one or two more images uh, or videos to that before I post the link. So you can check out this. I'll put a link to this article here. Um, you, you can also download my free app. Now you will get this free app if you go under any of my videos. There is a link to it, RT, RT TV free app. And you can either have the Android or HTML5. The HTML5, if you click on it, if you're on a laptop, will give you a desktop version which you can use. And there's loads and loads of stuff here. And you can link to my, my new channel here as well, uh, which is on BitChute. And if you want to make a donation on BitChute, my new channel, this is my backup channel. Um, basically, I've, I've downloaded or uploaded uh, a couple of about 150 videos so far onto this channel that none of them are new videos these are only older videos going back to 2017 16 and 15 and and so on um, and I will be uploading my entire back catalogue so if you want to watch any videos without uh, adverts on you can do that the quality isn't as good uh, they're not full HD and they're the, I think the compression rates are a little bit harsh so the quality isn't as good as it is on YouTube uh, but if you're watching on the mobile, it's fine. But there's no advertising, so I don't earn anything from this at all. And the only way I will earn anything from any of this, of course, is if one of you or some of you wish to make a donation, you can click on the dollar icon here and you can make a small PayPal payment if you wish. Or you can make a, a regular payment of a dollar or something a month. Entirely up to you. I don't have a Patreon account and I didn't go on the... Uh, the beggathon that everyone did a year or two, a couple of years back when uh, YouTube was in trouble. Uh, I've managed to hold that off for, for a couple of years, but it's getting quite difficult now to support myself. And, and uh, $5 a day that I get from YouTube is pretty ridiculous. I do think um, my channel's been restricted on YouTube and has been for at least a couple of years when they, when they confiscated loads of views off me. About 120,000 views I think they took off me. And ever since then, my channel, even now I've, I've got, gone from 10,000 to almost 30,000 subscribers in that time, in the last two years, uh, my views have gone down. So uh, <laughs> something very odd's going on there. And I, I, th I have complained to YouTube about it, but they're not doing anything. They won't even admit there's a problem. So do come along to um, BitChute. If you want to, a smallish donation would be appreciated. And it, would, it does help my research and help me carry on making these videos. Uh, YouTube may change drastically in the next year or two. Who knows? Anything could happen. So it's always good to have a backup plan. Um, but I don't earn any money from this at all. And uh, it's a lot of work. Years and years of research and videos. I've uploaded over 700 videos now to YouTube. And uh, many of them are quite short. But there's a lot of longer documentaries and in-depth studies and C CSI style investigations into some of these aliens and skulls and, and statues and objects and, and, and buildings and everything else. So do check it out if you want. Um, well worth a look. As I said, the quality isn't as good, but if you're on a mobile, it's, it's good enough. Uh, on a laptop, I would advise going on YouTube because the quality is that much better. And uh, you get full HD 60 frames per second videos and stuff like that, which I upload at really high resolution. So there we are. So thanks for watching everybody. Do like and subscribe if you haven't already and share it on social media. I will see you soon.